So my wife went for a little trip to the U.S. last week just to see if she could cross the border and get into the United States. We as Canadian citizens are not allowed to leave our country if we are not one of those that have complied with the government's orders to be vaccinated. And uh, she was able to cross into the U.S. without any trouble. They spent the day there, they had Cracker Barrel, and they enjoyed their time, did some shopping. And then on the way back, they didn't realize that they had to have a vaccine test, or sorry, a COVID test to get back into the country. And so they were refused entry. They were told, go back to here and here, and you might be able to get a test and then come back. They went back, and they couldn't find any place that was open. Everything was closed, and it was too late to get a test. So they thought they were going to throw themselves at the mercy of the border guard and just see, maybe he'll let us back in. My wife has a nursing toddler at home and she really wanted to be home. And so they went back to the border and the security officer there, uh, after being pulled into the side, yelled at them for not wearing masks in their own car and was yelling at them for not having gotten the test and all that kind of stuff. My wife replied and just told them, like, so you need, you don't, there's no need for you to yell at us. We, we've done everything that we know to do. We didn't know about the test at this point, and it is what it is, right? But anyway, they were turned around. They had to stay the night in the U.S. They got their test in the morning, came back to the border, and they had a great security guard. He was uh, very kind to them. He spoke very gently to them and comforted them quite a bit with how gentle and kind he was to them. So kind of restored their faith in, in humanity and in the law enforcement officers. But then today, now she's supposed to be quarantining here at home, which she has not been doing. We're not secretive about that. But she has been here when they call. She has, has to check in every so often. And it's very dangerous territory because they know she's not really complying. The police officer that came by today knows that she's not really complying. And yet we're pretending in a sense that we are. And I don't know if we're doing the right thing. Perhaps we should have just said, no, we will not take the test. No, we will not be quarantining. No, we will not, you know, and then just take the fines, fight it in court and do what we have to do. But having said that, we did this at this point, not knowing for sure how to go about it. Maybe next time we would do it differently. However, the law enforcement officer, the police came by today when he saw that we were free and happy. He took off his mask. Uh, no longer complying with the orders over him. He told us that the whole thing was ridiculous, that it didn't make any sense. And he was going to write down that not only Lisa was quarantining, which clearly she was not. He could see he was, she was spending time with us. She was supposed to be in her bedroom alone, separated completely. She, he was not only going to write down that my wife was complying, but that also our sister-in-law, who was with her, was also complying and that she was here quarantining. My sister-in-law obviously is not here. And uh, so you might think, well, that's a nice little victory. A law enforcement officer that has common sense, that can see that these things don't add up and that don't make sense. On one hand, I agree. On the other hand, the territory that we are getting into as a country is very, very dangerous. When the law enforcement officers themselves don't bother to uphold the law, it diminishes the authority of the law. I still respect law. I, I try to obey and abide by the rules, the tax rules, the speeding rules, the, the, the road rules, whatever laws there are out there, every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, I seek to comply and obey. However, if there's a law given that does not make any kind of common sense and officers themselves don't feel the need to enforce it, then we're getting into a territory where now perhaps our children will not commit to doing righteousness. They will not respect law enforcement to the point where they would comply because what's the point? Half of them are arbitrary. The rules that they're making up don't actually add up. And you know, I think in my conspiratorial way of thinking, I think that's actually part of the plan here is to take authority away from individuals and give it all to the state. And I could be wrong. But anyway, the Bible says this in Romans chapter 13, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. And the powers that be are ordained of God. So God put the rulers in place. He's the one that ordains them to be in the position that they're in, and therefore be subject to them. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. If you resist the law officers of our land you are resisting the ordinance of God. And they shall receive 
They that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. You will get judged by the law if you resist the law. Obviously, that only makes sense. Then he says, For rulers, the ones that God has ordained, are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. And so here we were doing that which, according to the law, the emergency act, was not good, and yet we were getting praise of the law enforcer. So this is really construing and confusing what the law is. And even the officer, that, that when they crossed back into Canada on the day after, he said, the laws change and the rules have changed so frequently that I often don't know, he said, what the rule is. How are you supposed to know? And it's almost like they want us to be in constant question and in complete dependence upon them for what is right and what is wrong. And it's going to get to the point where they are going to call that which is good, evil, and that which is evil, good, like Isaiah speaks of. And so here he says, He is the minister of God to thee for good. The law of, of the land is a minister of God to make society peaceful, to take murderers off the streets, to convict felons and to take thieves out of, ter out of uh, neighborhoods and to make the land more peaceful. They are there for that sake, for that reason. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. So if you're going to break the law, you should be afraid. He beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Therefore, wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. So don't just obey the government because they might put you in jail, but for your own conscience sake, obey the government. Listen to them as much as you possibly can. And yet, here we are in a place and in a time when the law is not resembling true law at all. The book of James says this, Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that say, said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So the way the law of God works is not like the law of the land. We need to implement this idea to our children so that they do not become confused as to what law really is. If, if we allow the way that the government is enforcing laws to become the status quo, the standard for which, by the way, we raise our children, it's going to be big trouble. Actually, as a side note, I would encourage you, if you're training your children, do not make many laws. Young moms, think about this. If you have 10, 15, 20 laws for your children and you can't enforce but four or five of them, then just drop those 10 and enforce the four and five. You know, don't make a bunch of rules that you can't uphold so that they break them and they feel like they can get away with it. Because then the ones that you are very clear on all of a sudden kind of come unclear as well. And people don't know. The kids don't know. Should I obey it or shouldn't I? And that's what's going on now in this country. We've had parents that haven't trained their children well. We've had parents that allow their children to do things that they commanded them not to do. And now we have a society that's building towards this same idea. The government is saying something. The law enforcement officers, half of them are, are upholding it, half of them are not. The society is split in a, in a way where we don't know whether we should obey or we shouldn't. We don't know if we should lie to the government or tell the truth. I think telling the truth is obviously always the better option. Um, it's, I think we're getting into a very dangerous territory. So I would encourage you this. Be very clear with the instructions to your children and be very absolutely crystal clear for yourself and for your children that when the law of God says something, it is not arbitrary. God did not say, thou shalt not commit adultery because he just was wondering, I think maybe we'll make adultery bad. You know, God could not have chosen for adultery to be good. He could not have chosen for love to be evil. This is getting kind of philosophical and maybe it's besides the point, but God chose what is right and what is wrong. He made his laws based on who he is, not on some arbitrary idea like, I think we'll make stealing good. Like he could not have done that. Stealing is harmful. It hurts people. So when God says, thou shalt not commit adultery, or he goes a step further and says, do not look upon a woman with lust in your heart. If you do, you've committed adultery already. That's not there because 
God just doesn't want you to enjoy the pleasure of looking at a woman. God, that's not there because God doesn't want you to enjoy the pleasures of your flesh. That's there not as a fence to keep you from pleasure and from li liberty and freedom. It's there as a guardrail to protect you from death and from hell. So the laws of the land should be similar to the laws of God. If you break one, you've broken the whole thing. The, the only way to get across to eternity is by the law of God would be to keep the whole thing. And you know, there's only ever been one man who kept the whole law of God. The, the law actually came in originally for the Jews. It says this in Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Moreover, the law entered. So here's a group of people living in the wilderness. They've never heard the law of God. The law entered, and it's been throughout human history since that point. It's been aware, we've been made aware of the law of God. The law entered that the offense might abound. So people were already doing that which was evil. So God points out to them what they were doing wrong by bringing in the law. So then it says, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So God is willing to forgive and let go and uh, receive sinners to himself through the sacrifice of his son. But if you are trusting in the law, you have to keep the whole law completely. And, and Jesus is the only man ever to have fulfilled the law of God. We are saved by works, just not our own works. You understand that? When, when the Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast, he, it's, he's taking the boasting away from us, and he's giving all of the boasting to Jesus. Jesus did the works that are required for you and I to go to heaven. He's the only one ever that was able to swing from, from mortal to immortal, from this life here and now to eternity without breaking a single law of God. Imagine swinging over a deep cavern on a chain. If you break one link in that chain, you're going down into the hole. It doesn't matter if you broke one or if you broke ten. The whole chain is now useless. Jesus swung over the cavern. He made it to the other side, having kept every single law of God. And now the Bible says that we come to God inside of Jesus, in Jesus. We are baptized into the body of Jesus Christ. We are saved by the life of Christ. That sin, uh, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's Romans 5.21. So the law of God will be upheld perfectly. The standard to get into heaven is absolute perfection and holiness. It's not like the commands and the laws of Canada. It's not confusing. It's not arbitrary. And it's not uh, kind of loose or left to interpretation. It is very, very clear. If you break the law of God, you are guilty of breaking the whole thing. And the wages of sin is death. However, but God. Jesus stepped into the gap. He took the punishment that you and I deserve. He, he came in between the anger and wrath of God toward us. He swooped in between and he saved us from certain death, taking the death for us. You know, there's a, a, an old story of a, a commanding officer in the army in the Second World War named Old Joe. And he was a bit of an ornery man, kind of tough and mean to his uh, privates and his, his people that were under his command. And yet one day, a young private, a young soldier who was in the army, he was there and he got caught in the crossfire and he kind of got stunned perhaps and maybe went a little bit like a deer in the headlights, didn't know what to do, and he was going to be killed for sure. And Joe, the old ornery, tough commanding officer, he jumped in between the bullets and he saved the young private. Now that young private took the coat off of Joe, old Joe, and he wore that coat for the rest of the war and hung it up in, in his room when he got home, I would imagine. And now anytime he looks at that coat, he can see the only reason he's alive is because old Joe took the bullet for him. Joe jumped in between certain death, what this young man had deserved by his inaction, by not doing what he ought to be doing, not being alert, Joe stepped in, the, in between and he took the bullet for this young ignorant man. You know, Jesus did something very similar to us. We were in the crosshairs of God. The wrath of God was upon us. All those that believe not and are not obeying the gospel are under the wrath of God. 
Every person who knows what is right and doesn't do it is under the wrath of God. And yet, just as the wrath of God is about to be released upon us, and it rightfully should be, Jesus steps in between, he goes to the cross, he takes your sin and mine, and he dies as if he were the sinner. You know, at the same time, he takes his righteousness, the the obedience to the, to the law, the obedience to God, he takes that and he gives it to us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, don't make any mistakes. If you stand before God with the law, you will be condemned. There will be no uh, halfway in, halfway out, maybe we'll uphold it this time, maybe we won't. I used to think that maybe God would have mercy on me. But the law is clear. It has no life in it. It was ordained to life, but we found it to be unto death, the book of Romans chapter 7 says. It, the law will not save you. Only the gift of God through Jesus Christ will give you life, eternal life. And that life is in His Son. Come to Jesus and teach your children truth, righteousness. Show them that the commands of God are serious and that they have to be upheld. And if they break them, they are in trouble. And then when they see themselves in trouble, point them to the refuge. Show them that we have found grace and mercy and love and forgiveness through our precious Savior, the Lord Jesus. So I, I really hope our country does not go downhill from here. I really hope that there is some uh, hope for revival and a way to fix this. But it doesn't look very good right now. The future is looking fairly bleak when it comes to uh, the way the country is upholding the righteous standards and the, the, the soldiers and the police officers that bear the sword are doing it in vain, it seems. So pray for our country, pray for our leaders, pray for our government, uh, Justin Trudeau, Doug Ford, whoever else, and uh, that they would come to see that they have to be ministers of wrath, ministers of good, to uphold what is righteous and clear. And uh, we ought to do the same in our own homes. God bless you.